what we're going to do is look at the past four interglacial warm periods. Now, these are warm periods where, for periods of 5,000 years at a time, at intervals of 125,000 years, the weather was warmer than it is today. Most of the time in the last million years, it's been a lot colder than it is today. But in the 11,400 years of the um, Holocene, as it's called, which is the present warm period, as I've said, about 7,500 of those 11,400 years were warmer than today. But interestingly, each of the previous four interglacial warm periods was rather warmer than anything we've seen in the Holocene warm period. Uh, they were three Celsius or five Fahrenheit warmer. And the question was, what causes these sudden but rather temporary spikes in global temperature? One of which we are very fortunate to be living in now, because otherwise most of the planet will be covered in ice to a, a rather uh, great depth. So now this is what uh, I show. It's a slide from... Petit et al., in which I've labelled which is CO2 and which is temperature, and you can see there is quite a nice match between the two, inferred from analysis of ice cores, where the CO2 content of the air is measured directly, that's the top graph you see there, and the temperature, on the other hand, is measured by taking the ratio of oxygen 18 to oxygen 16 two isotopes of oxygen, and that ratio is quite indicative of what the temperature was at the time when the air uh, was trapped in the ice. So we can then tell by the layers of ice roughly how deep we are, how old the ice is, and from that we can construct these records going back, um, in this case, about 600,000 years. And you'll see there are these four previous peaks of temperature, all of which, as you'll see, are bigger than the peak of temperature in the Holocene climate optimum, which occurred six to 8,000 years ago. So all four of the previous interglacial warm periods were very definitely warmer than the present. And the red line I've put across the graph there emphasizes where today's temperature is on that temperature graph at the bottom. Now here's what Professor Abraham has to say about this really quite innocuous and innocent graph. He says, Chris Monkton refers to a paper by Pettit, 1999, and he claims the past interglacial periods were about three Celsius degrees warmer than at present. The inference is that, hey, you know, it's been warmer in the past, so this recent warming may be natural, and who cares about it? Well, let's go look at the paper Chris Monkton referenced and see what the authors actually concluded. It's a favourite trick of Abraham. He goes and looks up the paper and he tries to find something in there that he says disagrees with what I actually said. And he says, so here's a reply to that slide, restating that Chris Monkton says that past interglaciers are three Celsius warmer than glacier. Why should we worry? Now, in fact, I didn't say, why should we worry? I just said, this is the fact. However... These authors use that record to show that carbon dioxide and methane are strongly linked to Antarctic temperatures. So this is a very mm -hmm. troubling paper, says Professor Abraham. I mean, the authors have used this data to say, you know, when greenhouse gases go up, temperatures go up, and when greenhouse gases go down, temperatures go down. The two things are correlated with each other very strongly, and the fact of the matter is we now have greenhouse gas levels that are higher than they've been in at least 800,000 years. Previously, he uses the figure of 420,000 years. Now he says 800,000. Actually, I'm prepared to agree to 20 million if it's agreeable to him, because you go back still further in the record, you find that CO2 was once present uh, as to one-third of the atmosphere, and that's 723 times today's concentration. So the idea that today's concentration is unusual or special doesn't really hold water. It's unusual in recent times, but that's not saying very much. However... The main lie, and I'm going to use the word lie again about what is said here by Professor Abraham, is that what Pettit et al. conclude, and they are um, among a number of other scientists writing about these data of the relationship between CO2 levels and temperature levels in the past climate inferred from ice cores, is that it was always the temperature that changed first, and the CO2 that followed, and not the other way around, as the professor said that it was. He has misstated what it was that Pettit et al. actually said. 
and has then used his misstatement of what they said to try to say that what I said was incorrect. Mm -hmm.